Hello guys and welcome back for a new Delta Project tutorial. Today we'll be showing you how to assemble the DNA75C mod. Here we have all the parts needed. The internal body, the external body, the top mounting 510 connector, some rigid thinned copper wire, a couple of M1.6 screws, M2 Torx screws, M2 knurled expansion inserts, the DNA75 color board with its screen, the 18650 battery tube, and that's it. Now let's see what tools we'll be using today. A wire cutter, a 1.5mm X key, a Torx 6 wrench, a small Phillips screwdriver, some rosin core solder wire and a soldering station. We we'll start off by trimming these two connections, cut them as close as possible to the body. Separate the cradle from the buttons. Now cut the buttons loose. There are some spare buttons in case you lose one. And here we go. Now I'm showing you that little groove there, can you see it? And here on the other side there's a little hole for the ground wire. You can even see it from the bottom. We have to properly align the grab screw axis in the center of that groove. Now try to align the closest top cap solder hole with the wire hole in the body, as I'm showing you in this pic. At this point, I recommend fastening the grab screw to keep the tube still. Let's mark the solder hole. I'm using a rigid wire and a little bit of paint. Do not exaggerate, we'll have to clean it off later. Let's do a mark close to our painted hole so that we can clean it off now. Tweezers with wet paper towel do a great job. Get the top cap ready for soldering. If you have a third hand, it'll be easier of course. By the way, we've made a nice tutorial covering soldering basics. I'll leave the link in the description for you guys. It has a lot of useful tips and you know, solder joints are key for a decent conductivity. Let's put the top cap back on. Now slide the tube in the body. Get the grab screw started in its thread. Tighten it properly. If you've done everything correctly, the tube should not move now. Start wiring the board. Please mind the direction of wires. It'll help a lot later on when inserting the board in the body. For the output wires, I would recommend to solder them as far as possible from each other. The main reason is safety, as these are not insulated but it will come in handy during the assembly too. Now insert the output wires first. Then it goes in the battery positive. Use pliers to pull the wire, but please be careful or you might damage the board. And here it goes. Put the M1.6 screws in place. Screw them down. Avoid over tightening or you might strip the thread off.
Make the wire fit into the groove. Trim it off and bend it to get the tip stuck in the center hole. This is how it should look now. Let's solder the wire. Here we go, nice and clean. Time to loosen the screws from the connector. Place the threaded inserts in the body. Push them down using a tool. Now cut the ground wires and start bending the positive wire. Push it in the side groove Trim the ground wires precisely 1.5 mm below the top body face. Trim the positive wire as well. Bend it as I'm showing you here. The reason for this bend is uh, it has to be elastic enough to move with the 510 positive pin. Keep the glitch 510 assembled. Loosen the wire and solder it to the pin. I recommend to fully extend out the wire so it will be easier to install the 510 on the body. Using tweezers, make sure the ground wires are properly positioned. Insert the 510 connector. You might need tweezers again to move the wires into their holes in the 510. Secure the wires by tightening the grab screw. Do the same with the M2 screws. Be careful to not scratch the top plate. To avoid scratches, you can cover it with tape if you want. Adjust the wire making sure it does not touch other wires and the pin stays straight. Open up the screen connector on the board. Gently insert the OLED screen and then close it. Slip the screen through the cradle. Push the cradle down. Check if everything is working fine. Fold the flex cable under the cradle and position the screen on it. This time I'm using the iron solder tip to get the inserts into the body. I wouldn't recommend it though. This process is easy to mess up. Place the buttons in the body. Flip the body to prevent them from falling. If they don't fit, use sandpaper to widen the button hole and a marker to blacken the sanded areas. Remove the screen protective film. Being careful, slide the internals all the way in the external body. Secure the internals with M2 screws. So let's see how we did. Put a decent battery in, remember this goes up to 75 watt. Screw the battery cap. And yeah, we did good. 
So this is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. We'll have soon a new one for you guys, so stay tuned.